Alright, here we go. Hey everyone, welcome to another Webflow Workshop. I'm your host, Nelson. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, hopefully this is another smooth stream. I think I got it all locked down. This could... Just let me know if there's any like buffering and then I'll get it fixed as fast as possible. But besides that, um, yeah, big news. If you guys haven't seen on the Twittersphere, um, the uh, Designer News website, or if you have the Muesli Chrome app um, installed, yeah, we are working on Interactions 2.0. And uh, 1.0 is is already has already been amazing. Uh, a lot of people have been using it. Uh, 3D transforms are a part of it, and so it's a lot of stuff happening. But we're not done. We, you know, we're never done, and and we're always trying to make stuff easier for web designers. And here you go, Interactions 2.0. You guys have been asking for it, for uh, asking for stuff like parallax scrolling for a long time, or. Um, mouse interactions, constant mouse interactions, or a timeline type animation type of thing. And uh, we are working on it. I've been watching this behind the scenes and it's like, it always blows my mind to see what the team is cooking up. So, um, okay, so the stream is snagging, Jason says. Let me just double check. Uh, no, it seems to be good so far. We're, good. We're just going to keep going, okay? So, yeah. If you haven't seen it, um, right here, I'll put the link in the chat room. It's it's such a beautiful thing. And uh, one of our new designers on the Webflow team, Ryan, has uh, designed this. And it's just simply beautiful. Uh, let's, let's scroll down together, shall we? So, first thing you notice is... We have parallax scrolling, actual layers uh, going in different speeds. And by this UI screenshot, um, this right here, it shows that you can make something super simple, like have three layers and just show where they're going to be at 0% and then where they're going to be at 100%. And it's just amazing. See, all these layers are, are different. And so they're moving at different speeds. This is this is really, really beautiful. Because I know that uh, when you're adding parallax scrolling, you have to add custom code. And then you have to connect that um, in your Webflow site in a way that like connects to your custom code. And it's all just confusing. But now you can easily add it with the next interactions. It's just amazing. And this part right here, I've actually did a, I did a YouTube uh, video a long time ago about how to add parallax um, mouse movement to your Webflow site. And it was through custom code. But look at this. You have a, a tracking of your mouse X and a tracking of your mouse Y, which is X is the X uh, axis and Y is the up and down, so like that. And so it's always tracking where you are and it, it looks super duper simple. And I can't wait to get my hands on it and try it out. And I know you guys have been waiting for this as well. Uh, so, oh, last thing, this demo right here, chaining of events, that, is awesome. So you have a real timeline of events happening. Uh, I know that I have to use the delays whenever I want to do something that's kind of like material design where you have things show up in different times. So I have to say, okay, this one has a delay of 200, then this one has a delay of 250, and so on and so on and so on. Well, here you actually have a timeline and it's just ah, amazing. I can't wait. So if you guys haven't signed up for the beta, do it right here uh, right here put your email go for it and we'll send you that email as soon as we got the beta up and like i always say about future uh features it's coming soon and we want to make sure that it works really well and that's why you know if you haven't seen any updates from us it's because we're making sure that we're focusing on quality not quantity all right so sign up today this is so awesome so awesome 
All right, and if you haven't played with Interactions 1.0 yet, there's a link at the bottom to show you how that's all done, and there's, it's still super powerful, so go play with it, especially with the 3D transforms. Okay, enough geeking out about this. Um, even though that the news just came out today, it, so much geeking out about. But anyways, uh, as always, I want to say thank you to everyone in the live chat. Uh, Alexandra, Anna, Nita, Alex, Riley, Vincent, Dan, uh, Bob, Jason. Oh my god, you guys, thank you so much. Nav, and I think Daniel was the first one in the chat room. Yep, thank you guys so much for coming here every week. I love geeking out about Webflow with you guys and web design in general. So, this week's topic, what should you have in your portfolio? Yes, a uh, huge topic that uh, every designer goes through, you know, whether it be for freelancing, consulting, or uh, getting a full-time job, part-time job, whatever, and a, um, uh, to be part of a creative team, it's, it's very important to have your own portfolio, you know? So what should you have in your portfolio? And I've made a list and these are, this is just based on my own opinion and we can discuss, you know, discuss each, each point and let me know if you disagree with anything or agree, just post it in the chat room. So let's get down to it. Excuse me. Um, in my opinion, you should have your story. Why are you a designer? Why do you like being a designer? What makes you continually learn web design? And what is that passion? Why, why do you have that passion for it? Everyone has a different backstory. What is yours? Okay. Uh, your past work. Okay. Uh, do not, in my opinion, do not put every single piece of work on your website you know not everything is going to be your best only show your best four or six projects okay if you're really really proud of it how does it stack up against the rest of your projects okay only get your best four or six and put it on there no one needs to see all 100 of your projects if you have 100 projects done that's awesome you're you're in business that's great but you don't want to show all the stuff that isn't really that great okay um just like uh vincent said uh testimonials yeah, so testimonials is good. If you have uh, clients that really love working with you, ask them for a testimonial. It really, really helps. And uh, it really helps to have uh, a case study with that. S stream is lagging again. Hold on. Hmm. We're just going to keep going, guys. We're just going to keep going. Um... We're already too far deep into this. Nine minutes in. Let's just keep going. Um, yeah, so... Your story, your past work, your testimonials, um, case studies, yes. And I'll show you examples of each of these things, okay? Your past experience, okay? If you're looking for um, a job, you know, in-house job, you can... You can show off your past experience where you've worked in the past and your skills. So when it comes to showing off your skills, in my opinion, percentages or bar graphs or something like that of each of your skills does not matter. What What is that percentage based, out of, uh, based off of? Okay, for example... Um, my Photoshop skills are 75%, but yet Photoshop is always adding new features. So is that 75% from, from a certain version or is that 75% to the latest version? Like what is it? It, it, it doesn't make sense. And then uh, you have, uh, you, you have your, if you want to put a blog, go for it, you know? But that's really tough. I, I think that's very optional because as designers, it's tough to be a writer. If you have that skill of being a writer, 
do it. Show off uh, your knowledge. That's, uh, but keeping up with a blog is really tough. I tried to do it. You know, I tried to go on Medium and post as much as possible. But man, that takes a lot of work when you don't really write every day. You know, and it, it's tough. But what do you guys think? Um, what about, what do you think about that list? Oh, and lastly, your photo. Take a good headshot. Imagery is everything. People connect with humans. They like to see human faces. It's why we still have uh, TV news stations. Uh, because instead of just talking or, or reading a news article online, to actually see someone tell you the news story, you get more of a human connection and you start to understand it more because there's inflection and whatnot. So take a good headshot and... Uh, Oh, too many people are saying it's lagging. Uh, I don't want to end this. I've set this to 720p. I don't know. I can't change it right now, guys. I can't change it right now. And my wife is shaking her head at me. Why do you gotta make me feel even worse? <laughs> I'm trying here. Ugh, okay. Sorry for the lag, guys. Um, next week, I'll make sure to click on that 720p button. Hopefully, it'll work. Ugh. Anyways, so that's my list. Let me put the list in the chat room right now, okay? Let me just copy and paste it. Here we go. So, the first thing um, I have on here, let me just copy and paste it. Ah! Dang it. So you need your photo, your story, what is your backstory, your past work, no more than, no more than six projects. Uh, of course your past experience, you know, uh, work experience, um, testimonials, case studies, skill, of course your skills, but no percentages, okay, and optional blog okay so there's the list what do you guys think what do you guys think should you not have your photo should you not have your story like what do you think about this list okay and while I'm waiting all right no one's saying much. Okay, so we'll move on. Beyond this, to make yourself stand out from the crowd, in my opinion, you can do a little bit more if you want to challenge yourself. Okay? For example, and this one's a tough one, and it's one that I'm trying to deal with all the time, is make a creative logo you know try to stretch your brain and um uh yeah try to stretch your brain and make yourself a creative logo it'll make you stand out rather than just having your name you know um do video screen capture so record yourself record yourself uh building stuff uh preferably in webflow and do a time lapse of that and post it on your site so people can see you you're actually building something from scratch uh or teach what you love you know um and and like for example go to meetups and have those um have your presentations recorded and post them up on your site you know it'll show that you're knowledgeable you're confident in your skills and you're trying to teach others to do the same Okay, get you can get mentioned in blogs or tweets, you know, talk to people, say, hey, I want to I want to help out with your blog or um, if you can tweet uh, tweet at me and so forth. And lastly, and this is what I'm working on that um, one of my goals speak at conferences. I know that's a big one. It's it's huge. But when you have that kind of confidence and um, content on your portfolio site. 
it just shows you're different than people who just have work on there. Okay, uh, let's go through some questions uh, and comments. So case studies are key. Um, Ardwin, yes, yes, yes. Um, for example, uh, let me just put this one here. So when you have a case study, okay, when you have a case study, you show exactly all the steps you went through with the client to make their finished site or their whole finished product, uh, to make their pro project finished, okay? It's going through the whole process and documenting it. It adds more weight to rather than just, hey, here's the finished site, cool, whatever. But for example, going through this uh, page right here, they show off the challenge and they show off the solution. Let me put the link in the chat room, okay? They show off the challenge and the solution, okay? So here's the beginning and here's the end. So here's their first meeting with the client and all the research that they had to do, all the whiteboarding that they had to do with the client during their first meeting. And then here's some backstory on what they had to, what challenges they, they faced. Here's a couple of sketches of the, of the client's logo until they finally got to the end one right here in the bottom right. And you scroll down, you have the testimonial, okay? And it adds even more weight. And then here's some photography that they used and their final logo and color treatment, uh, typography, uh, textures, colors, etc., etc. Okay. And here's uh, here's the team working on the project. Okay, so it just shows that you know they work hard rather than hey we finished the site or hey we made the logo cool done. No, there's a lot of steps to get there, so show that off. And like I was saying about uh, recording yourself building a website, uh, let me turn off the music. So here's a time lapse. Okay, so when you show a time lapse, people will get more interested like, whoa, okay, this person knows what they're doing. And someone asks, what's a good program for recording your screens? Um, I use a Mac and so I use ScreenFlick. Uh, let me pause this one right here. ScreenFlick. Right here. So Screen Flick can record your screen and do a time lapse of it. Okay. And then I also use, uh, let's see here, Camtasia. I use Camtasia by TechSmith to do some simple editing. And this is actually what I use for, um, for longer for longer recordings, like I did for the Oculus Rift uh, rebuild. Um, yeah, yeah. So Camtasia is really easy to use, really, really easy to learn. Um, yeah, but those two programs are not free, okay? So yeah, and Theo says QuickTime, that's a good one as well, obviously. It's packaged with iOS, I mean, with Mac OS. And so, yeah, uh, case studies, really, really big deal, okay? Show off everything you've done for the project, for the client, and that gives more weight to the project. And so, yeah, doing this for like 50 projects is way too much, and that's why it's good to just have your six best client work so you can give even more weight to it with uh, a case study. All right. Um, what else did I talk about? Your story. Okay, so I'm going to use Anna's, um, actually I'm going to use Dfink. Uh, Dfink is one of the community experts on the forums. So this one has personality. Okay, so he, expl uh, he has a creative logo. Okay, and nice imagery. 
we scroll down and it's we don't even get to his work yet it's his story this is his backstory i have a passion for great design uh you know and it's hello there it's it's a nice greeting rather than dave web designer here's my projects no the, he starts out with his story and why he can help you okay uh, we got a question from Mike Carew 305 question. I'm a graduate from full sale, but from the recording art program But I'm teaching myself UI UX from sources like Mike Locke oh. Do you think having that bachelor's degree in something different would hurt hurt me or would I appeal more in being somewhat self-taught? Ah, good question a lot of people in the web design community have been self-taught because the web design industry is evolving every day. There's always a new piece of CSS code out there um, or a new piece of technology that's affecting web design that we need to learn. And traditional schooling, um, in my opinion, can't keep up with the speed of our industry. And so there's a lot of free and paid resources out there to get hands-on learning so if you're doing uh if you're learning one skill and you're learning ui ux on the side awesome do that you don't really need any certificates in my opinion you don't need uh certificates or traditional schooling for ui ux because it's always something experimental if you see a problem that you think can be fixed do it Figure it out. What can be fixed? Document it and show it off in your portfolio. You know. All right. So great question. Um, so yeah, this is Defink's website, and then after he greets you to his site, he shows off his work. All right. And it has a certain personality of like handwritten or you know it like wood textures type of thing that he's doing it by hand. You know. Obviously, he's not using a typewriter like that in the background, but <laughs> yes. So there you go. Uh, we're going to go to Anna's site. I know, I know that I've shown this site before, but I want to just show it again because great job, Anna. Um, again, showing your story. And this one takes it even further because not only is she showing her story, she's showing a portfolio. Uh, she's showing a photo. It's something that um defink doesn't have and i you know it'd be nice to have but i think having your photo with your story brings that connection like i was saying about the news uh online versus on tv or a stream you know so get a good headshot and um you know show people hey i'm a real person behind this computer and i want to help you okay uh she says what can I do for you and then at the end uh, she has client testimonials and then her work so her work is all the way at the bottom but she's greeting you into the door okay and then yay <laughs> all right and then at the end hey contact me uh, this is an another great website as well okay this is Mindwire awesome web um, web flow community member now, he's going for minimalism all type. Okay, I, I love it. I love what he's doing, you know? He's keeping it super simple. But again, in my opinion, maybe a photo somewhere showing that he's a real person behind the computer screen, you know? Maybe instead of this you know this uh graphic right here maybe it could be his photo somewhere even if it's a photo of him but pushed back like the opacity is set to like 20 or something at least there's some sort of some sort of subtle way to say hey i'm a real person okay and i'm i'm here to help but overall this is you know nice a beautiful nice beautiful site uh Hey, Nelson, can you throw in the last site's URL? Sure. So here's Definks. And here's Anna's. Okay, I'll put the links every time I throw them up. Here's Mine Wires. All right. And now we're going to go to this guy right here. 
and explain why it sucks. Because this person hasn't worked on it for the past two and a half or three years. <laughs> so this person didn't want to show his face. <laughs> and so why didn't he show his face? And then he said, well, maybe, oh, <laughs> the Instagram thing is broken. <laughs> oh my God. I, so this is my portfolio site. Okay. And... <laughs> Apparently, I haven't touched it in a long time because this is broken, but I thought, hey, I'm going to show off everything, you know, that interests me. And it was a good idea at the time, but now it's boring. <laughs> I don't even use my PlayStation anymore. Um, I changed my glasses. Who uses an iPad? Come on. But yeah. Yeah. Ugly, ugly sight. Ugly sight. But hey, the portfolio... I'm showing off the, the three, or no, one, two, I don't even know how many. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yay! Seven. Oh. <laughs> I almost stuck to my own um, opinions or my own rules. So, yes. Nita says, you are your own worst client. Yes, we all are. When we're making our own portfolio sites, that is the hardest part. But just keep at it. Keep iterating it's it's a never-ending process portfolios um but yeah um what but in my portfolios i always try to document the process you know and explain why i've done what i've done and also doing uh screen captures and and explaining what i'm doing wow that is a very old version of webflow look at that look at that ui <laughs> Look, there's no top bar. Wow. Okay. All right. Uh, my crew, uh, the rule of keeping it to six projects, no more than six really good projects. That was the rule. So, yeah, and I don't, so things that I broke, uh, things, uh, the rules that I broke. I don't have my portfolio. I have my story right here but i have even more story on my resume part right here um and here's the link to it so you all you all can laugh at it um yeah past experience i got that right here uh no testimonials uh i have my skills down here and i don't use percentages i tried to start a blog i have two yeah. So yeah. Okay. Um, moving on. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Here's one that uh, I saw on the awards website. So this one's pretty cool. It's a unique layout. Okay. Uh, a little bit of story. That's awesome. But it, it's lacking personality. You know. Again, photos. Who are you? I want to. I want to know who you are. I don't want to talk to a robot. I want to talk. I want to talk to a person. You know, here's more of his story right here. So a great photo could have been right here. You know. I doubt that. It, I'm really doubting this is his hand. You know, um, it could be a stock photo for all I know. Okay. Who are you? Let's, uh, let's, this one is really good. And I've uh, mentioned this in past workshops. Craig Teal. Let me, uh, uh, here we go. Here's the link. That's obviously Craig. On the right, obviously, you know. That's Craig, and that's not Craig. And he explains that saying, let's be clear, he's the one on the right. But just like the mighty Puma, Craig looks challenges straight in the eye and says, let's do this. So this is a great lesson in copywriting. If you have skills in writing funny content, then this really, really helps your website. And it, it's a tough skill to get, but, um, you know, if you have it, <laughs> use it. Uh, here's his highlights. And in the bottom, he hates talking in third person. <laughs> Uh, recent clients nice oh that's always if you have some nice 
clients that you've worked for show that off you know and I had no idea you can milk a cat <laughs> I don't understand all right so it's a it's a really so here he's making fun of skills and percentages like marketing strategy brand design so there's these percentages but then he says one piece of pizza it's pac-man and so it he's making fun of that t type of design okay so this is a great portfolio to um to you uh to get inspiration from all right really awesome site all right and uh this guy right here mike Locke, and some of you in the chat room might be coming from his uh youtube channel thank you guys so much for coming over to watch the stream but this guy he was in our past workshop and he was talking about how much he loves webflow right now and this one is now built in webflow uh, he redesigned his site and it's awesome uh thank you mike for using it if you're watching this thank you so much for being part of the web, uh, webflow community uh so yeah photo of him he's thinking he's um into his job that's awesome uh, his story sharing advice knowledge and motivation what he does it's super simple right in the hero you know and then he has his story he has his skills look no percentages just here are my skills okay and then a shot of his neighborhood that's pretty dude those houses must be expensive oh <laughs> man oh man and that hoa <laughs> anyways so yeah his site is good now some stuff not to do all right um you've already seen my site and what not to do and you know but then i got tweeted this link and i don't know if it's from a bot or something because i was asking for portfolio links and i started getting followed by all these bots asking hey do you need a web design service i can help you and i'm like no, I just need a link. Anyways, I got this link, and it seems super template-y. There's too much going on, and I don't know where to look first, you know? So I guess I read this first, and then I'm looking at their portfolio. So immediately, it's like, hey, we do things. Here's what we do. No personality. No welcome mat. No um, let me know what you're all about. Okay, there's no story. I feel like I'm talking to a robot. And like I said about too many projects on the page, well, it just keeps going. I don't want to be looking at Instagram, or not Instagram, uh, uh, Pinterest. I want to know if I can really work with these people. And to me, I see all these all these designs and it makes me think okay they just do a very quick turnaround type of okay you need something okay we do it done you're out so it's they don't really work hand in hand with the client it's just quick turnaround type of projects you know but when you show off a case study so let's go here see there we go it, I guess this is a case study, but it's what's where's the where's the before and after like is and this type of UI design is really old uh, like this is definitely a WordPress template I can tell because I've used that back in 2003. <laughs> so I mean you don't want to keep too many projects because then they get old. Okay, so yeah. Too many projects, no personality to this. Even if I go to about, is that really them? Is that really them? It's definitely a stock photo. Like, how do I trust this company if the company doesn't even show off who they are? You know, are the people in the background, is that really them? Is that really a meeting that they've had? If so, they have a great hairdresser and, and, and makeup artist on staff because 
and a great lighting team to come with them to every meet. Can you imagine a lighting team going to every meeting? <laughs> that would be funny, right? Client testimonials. Tom. Okay, Tom from where? What? What? Um, is this a real person, Tom? Richard, is this a real person? You know, like read all. What? I can go on and on. Okay. Okay, now it says race chasers. Okay, now it's making more sense. But now it's just too much. <laughs> like, the more you put, the more I feel like you're hurting yourself when you add so much. All right, last one that I want to review. Okay, and before we get into this, uh, let me let me just put there. If you have anything that you're working on on Webflow right now, post your Webflow IO uh, links and let's review them. Upload links now for a review. Cool. All right, Kyle Diggs. Um, he tweeted this to me, and it seems like he. Let's go through his resume first. Hi, Kyle. There's your photo. Nice photo. Okay, so he's. Let's see here. Seems that he just started in the web design field. Awesome, welcome to it. One thing, well, with all the tips that I've shown, or I spoke about in the beginning of the stream, uh, is a lot of stuff you can grow on, okay? You can start definitely improving stuff. So you have a unique logo, awesome, but you're missing the human connection, your photo. You have a photo here on your resume, put it here on your site. And here, when I come to your portfolio site, all I see is a logo and what you've worked on. And I, I keep saying this multiple times to people I meet. You are not robots. You are people with a background. You have a, you have a life story. People come in from uh, different points in life to find their way to the web design industry. And web design is super weird because we're always having to deal with browser issues, device issues, uh, new types of technology, new types of code. We're always dealing with something new every day. And not many people can do what we do because it's always evolving. So what keeps you there? Okay, what keeps you in this industry? And so you're a person with skills, hobbies, um, you have a face. Show who you are before you show what you do. Okay? I want to know who you are because you're not a robot. And I can't stress that enough. Okay? Um, so, yeah, that's what I think you should have in a portfolio. Hopefully that's uh, helpful enough for you guys. Uh, show me what you guys are working on. Let's see what you're doing on Webflow, all right? And uh, for those who, who are just joining us, Webflow Interactions 2.0, it's coming. Sign up for the beta. It's going to be awesome, and you're going to enjoy it, and you're going to be like, how did I not live with Webflow before? <laughs> oh, man. All right, let me close this, close this. Yeah. All right. Welcome, Cohen. Thank you for coming on the stream. I was quiet in the chat room. Unless I'm super duper laggy. Let's see here. Seems to be fine right now. All right. Here we go, Cohen. What are you working on? Laser clinic, Cl clinique, clin. Hmm. All right. Okay. One. Uh, Anna says one guy asked me today if there's a chance for him to be a beta tester if he has a free account. Yeah. Uh, just sign up for a free Webflow account and then sign up for that beta and, you know, if he gets chosen, then we'll get him in. All right, Alex, I'll get 
to your link after this one. So here we go. All right. So I feel like a lot of things are happening here. I don't know where to put my eyes at first because you have this bright green bar trying to get my attention, but at the same time, this photo of people is getting the same, is vying for my attention as well at the same time. So I'm like, where do I look first? And then I, even at the same time, this button right here feels like the main call to action. And so where do I put my eyes first? So in my opinion, maybe this shouldn't be green. You know, maybe it can still, maybe it can be green later. Like when I scroll down past the hero row, it can be green later. Or like a sticky bar that comes up from the top later. But moving on. I like what you did with the cards. Great job. Nice hover effect. So I noticed that you have a transition with the drop shadows or the outer glow, but no transition with the with this black bar or this bar that darkens the photo. So maybe add some sort of trend uh time transition for that so it's not super jarring. So this text is on top of this lady's photo, so you might want to fix that. Because that's not good. Because they're crashing into each other. Okay. So you have hover effects on these card things. That's good. But a hover effect usually means it's clickable. So I'm clicking on this and nothing happens. But I click on this and it's going to go to that blog post. Okay. So you might want to... You might want to make the whole thing clickable or just remove the outer glow uh, hover effect. Okay. Nice, nice interactions right there. Nice interactions right here. 3D transforms, loving it. Little flip in action going. Oh, cool. You're using filters, grayscale. Using 3D interactions as well. Nice. Good job. That makes it more fun. All right. Let's go one more page in this site. See how this face is not inside the box? This makes makes it better. Okay, so watch out for that. I know it's kind of hard when using um, a background image set to cover. But you're going to have to play around with the imagery a bit. Nice. Uh, no complaints here. I like this. So I'm guessing you hired a photographer to do all this stuff. So great job. Nice in context. Like it. I'm not sure what that is all about. Oh, yeah. All right. Great job so far, Cohen. Keep it up. All right. Moving on to Alex. Alex says, hey, Nelson, my partner and I have a small creative initiative consultancy business. I do design work mostly and my partner handles the business. Would you advise me to add, remove, or improve below? Click art. I think we've seen this before. Let's take a look. Yeah, I have seen this before. Okay. Okay, I can't scroll. This is nice interactions happening. Cool, cool. Nice hover effect. Okay. Nice. Okay. All right. So, like I said before, stars, percentages, bar graphs, what have you, for skills, doesn't make sense. So, what I would remove immediately are these stars. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. So remove them but you have your photo here that's good I'm talking to a person I it's you know I'm not talking to a robot this is your story good job all right let's see what your services are nice tabs 
notice how I hover and it has to replace it with another image. I would suggest using a regular, I'm, I'm guessing you're using two different images. If that's correct, I would suggest uh, using a, an icon font, like Font Awesome. Okay, let me look up Font Awesome, Font Awesome. Here you go, guys. So Font Awesome, you can add that to, you can upload that to your custom fonts in Webflow. And what I would do, and I've done this before, is uh, make a div block with that border, that red border, and then rotate it uh, 45 degrees, and then put a text block inside of that, and add the add an icon with um, font awesome, and then rotate that back 45 degrees. And so you still get this diamond, but you don't get the jarring effect of waiting for the next image to load on hover. So it's easier for you to control because it's a font and it's a div, and you can change the color however you want. You don't have to go on Photoshop or whatever to change the color if, say, your color scheme changes to blue and orange or something like that. It's just a hex color that you would change because it's a font. It's a live text, okay? Um, but I like what you're doing. Keep it up. Um, careful with these, uh, these types of stock imagery that you've seen everywhere especially on google image search try to do something that's unique or stick with the style that you're using for example you're using a lot of vector graphics here but this one is a rasterized image okay a rasterized image of vector graphics so i would stick to this type of art style and replace this one okay but you know just my opinion, you don't have to follow it. Uh, let's see here. So keep it up, Alex. Good job. I'm rooting for you guys. Like, remember, take these opinions and, you know, if you don't like them, that's totally fine. This is just from my point of view. And design is very subjective, okay? I'm not the best designer in the world. You saw my portfolio site. But this is what I see, and I'm only saying these things to help you guys out, to, to help you guys grow into something better than what you are today. Because that's what we should all be doing every day. Go for perfection, but never actually get there, you know? Because there's no such thing as perfect. Nita. I'm redesigning my portfolio. It is in very early stage for sharing at this point. I'll share it as soon as more advanced. Would love to have your feedback then. Yes, send it as soon as you can. Joe, you're not late. Don't worry. You can always watch the recording on youtube.com slash webflow. Uh, Theo is saying, or just use filters. Not sure what that was about. Uh, Alex, uh, thanks for the icon suggestions. Yep. Ba is saying, design others, design others see what you don't see. Oh, design comma, uh, wait, no, design others. Ow. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Anything else, guys? Yeah. Anyone else working on something on Webflow? Um, yeah. How do you target a particular particular color via CSS filters? Uh, what you're asking for is a uh, CSS like the the hue. Let's see, it says hue. So this is the filters property. Let's see here, CSS tricks. So you cannot, in the CSS filters, we have some of the functions, but not all. For example, we have grayscale, sepia, saturate, but we don't have hue rotate. For example, this guy right here, where we can 
where we can change it up or invert. I don't think we have invert. And it's because not all browsers support it yet. For example, the... Uh, maybe I'm looking at the wrong one. There's like a... There's this one like multiply effect. Huh. Yeah, we, we don't have those yet. Uh, let's see here. But you can always add them using custom code. As with a lot of stuff that Webflow doesn't have yet. Uh, Amit saying, future in UI UX designing, please help. Uh, okay, what do you need help with? Uh, what is your question? Ah, Bob saying, in design, others see what you don't see. Yep, that, it's why, you know, you always need to get your portfolio site in the eyes of other designers because then they will see something that you didn't catch because you're working on your project or portfolio site and you have like blinders on because you're trying to get the thing done and you're like oh my god this is awesome but you're not seeing the full picture where when people come in with fresh eyes they're going to be like oh you, f you forgot this or this could be better and you know that's when you're like oh okay i will improve yes Let's see here. Doo -doo -doo. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. But as always, okay, so back on interactions. L with great power comes great responsibility. I don't want to see any of you Michael Baying your websites. All right? What is a Michael Baying of a website? That means so much interactions happening left and right and explosions and there's no content it's all just animations left and right you know i know we're gonna be seeing sites like that um being built with interactions 2.0 but um if you really want to progress use these interactions uh use these sparingly okay for example this site is not using inter, um, parallax scrolling with these guys right here. Even though we could have, we only want to show it off once. And we're showing it off here. And then for this, we're only showing it off once. And then for here, we're only showing off once, you know? Make sure there's a point, there's a purpose for your animations and interactions, okay? If there isn't, don't do it, all right? Amit says, I love UI UX, but in my college, everyone is doing coding. And I feel so odd since I'm doing an undergraduate degree in uh, computer science engineering. Is that S CSE? Uh, the basics of coding is great to learn. It'll make you even faster in Webflow. Okay. When you know the basics, the, the fundamentals of an industry, that makes you more powerful with the tools that are coming out in the future. For example, in graph design, you still need to know the basics of color theory, imagery, lighting, uh, typography, uh, layout, spacing. You need to know those fundamentals. With those fundamentals, you can bring it on over to a futuristic program like Photoshop, Illustrator, and Design, and whatnot, and get the job done faster because you know the fundamentals. Same thing at Webflow. If you know the fundamentals of HTML coding, CSS, maybe a little bit of jQuery, then that'll make you so much faster uh, inside of Webflow and especially Interactions 2.0 because if you know a little bit of jQuery and understand how parallax scrolling works a little bit, you can apply that fundamental into Interactions 2.0 and just fly through it. It's gonna be fun. So yes, learn coding, at least the fundamentals, to be even more awesome Webflow. But also, I've seen students learn Webflow to learn coding, okay? I know it's a little bit backwards, but people who are um, designing something in Webflow, publishing it, and then looking at the source code and saying like, oh, okay, this does this, now I'm un kind of understanding uh, coding and that's fine too all right 
Uh, Zach, nowhere close to being finished working on homepage design, new to Webflow. Uh, just testing the waters, seeing if I can use this tool to build our new site. Is there a way to have a burger nav and also a top nav for the navigation? Let's look what you're working with. Nice. Okay, so it seems like a conference or something happening. Okay, careful with your horizontal scroll here. You have something being pushed over to the right. Nice. Good job. Nice. I wonder, is this Flexbox? I hope so. Or it can be Columns. Great job. Great job. Uh, let's see here. Yes, you can have a hamburger menu. Um, if you haven't been to our help site, here you go. And navigation. I think setting up. I think this one's it. Yeah, this one's it. I'm going to link it in the chat room. So yeah, if you see right here in the screenshot, there's a hamburger button. So we have a nav we have a nav bar component that you just drag in and it's already set up for you. The hamburger menu button, um, making it responsive, it's all set up for you. You just got to replace uh, you just got to style it a little bit, you know, it comes in a, a basic gray background color. And so you just got to change that up by adding a class name and going to town. This video will explain it completely for you. So go to town without Zach. Welcome to the Webflow community. I hope to see you again next week so I can see how far you've taken this site. Cause so far it's looking great. All right. Cool, let's see here. Okay, it's a slider. So you've learned a lot so far. Great job. Can't wait for interactions too. Yes, I can't wait either. I wanna play with it. I wanna do all the things and make things happen. Wait, I just realized something. With this thing, I can, maybe I can finally make my Iron Man HUD type thing. I've always wanted to make an Iron Man HUD in Webflow. HUD means H-U-D or heads up display. Hi Nelson, actually caught it this time. Yay, welcome. Yeah, we're in the last minutes though. Hopefully you can catch the recording of this and maybe see uh, catch us next week um, at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So yeah, let me get the last two links of whatever someone uh whatever you guys are working on or uh the last question that i can answer about anything about webflow anything and even if it's a hey are you guys working on this i will answer that with coming soon <laughs> like i always do you guys oh bye you're leaving thank you so much for stopping by hope to see you next week uh yeah interactions 2.0 gonna be fun gonna do so much stuff thank you jason hi alex so yeah last question okay so while i'm waiting for the last question hey nelson account information question don't put your account information on the chat room would have shared earlier but had to fix some interactions all right alex what are you working on this is alex's site longtime fan of webflow awesome webflow expert a brief intro nice hello alex hmm <laughs> A diverse set of skills. That's really cool. We've learned uh, pie charts before, but um, yeah. The, again, the I love the interactions, but what do they actually? What does the percentages mean in the bigger picture thing? Okay, so that's what we're talking about today. Um, if 
few projects. Nice. Oh, yeah, I've seen this one. Good job. Oh, cool. That's a cool interaction. I like how the left changes. That's different. Oh, your Twitter logo is broken. What is that? Great job. Okay, so it's all one pager. Nice. That's a different layer. I like it. Nice. Alright. So we have a link and probably a question. Here we go. Okay, great personality. Everyone's having fun. Nice. I like how she... It looks like she's punching the logo. <laughs> but she's in the photo. She's just like, yeah. All right, it's a slider. Oh, really nice photography. Great job with the photography. This could use a little more space at the top and bottom because it looks like there's not a lot of uh, space happening. You need to give some room, some negative space. This is nice. The, the main focus of the image is everyone cheering. So that's good that it's not inside this box, okay? Ooh, pretty nice place. Great job so far. All right, so this bowling right here could be a different font color because it gets kind of lost in here or it can be bigger. Um, these get lost because it's super duper thin and small. I think this whole, these things could be bigger. You know, go ahead and play with the type sizes and see if you can make them even bigger because you're already using big imagery here, big uh, bold font here, but then you get here and it's kind of like very small. But this is the most important part, you know, people want to know information about the, um, about the place, how much do things cost. So make it even bigger. It's, it needs to be seen. Okay. <laughs> Wait. People are kicking a ball? Are you allowed to do that? <laughs> Actually, yeah, I guess you'd be allowed, but it's gonna hurt. <laughs> That's cool. Great job. Great job. Oh, cool. So you put an overlap on top of this. I haven't seen anyone do that. Great job. Mike, I like what you do. I like what you're doing. Okay, a one pager. Nice. Alright, uh, last question, and it's coming from Alex. Um, account upgrading, say from pro to team, do I have to pay the difference only or do I abandon my current subscription completely for the full price one? Great question. So when you're creating a team plan, okay, this is for anyone. Um, if you're creating a team plan, you're essentially creating a new dashboard. You're creating a new account. Okay. It is... A team plan is not the same as an individual plan. Individual plans are the starter free, uh, per, the starter free plan, the personal, and professional. Those are individual. Those individual plans can connect and be part of a team plan, but that team plan exists on its own. So if you're going from pro to team, you're creating a team plan, but you still have your pro one. Okay. So what I would suggest is Create your team plan, right? And then transfer all of your sites from your pro plan to your team dashboard. And then cancel your pro plan to make it go down to the starter free plan. Okay, so that way your starter free plan, you're not paying for it and all you're paying for is the team plan. Okay. Uh, and personal to pro, yeah, that's, you're still, Personal to pro, they're both individual plans, so that you're you're still um, you know you're paying for the pro plan. Uh, if you upgrade your individual plans at any at any time, even in the middle of a billing cycle, you will get a pro um, proration. Okay. Oh yeah, and Cohen says, watch out with a team plan. You cannot make a showcase. Yeah, you cannot showcase your sites on a team plan yet. We are fixing that. 
Okay, that was a fun, fun workshop. Thank you guys, as always, for being in the live chat room. I love you all. I hope you guys take uh, this advice and make your portfolio sites even better. I want you guys to get awesome projects or an awesome in-house job because as designers, it, it's tough, you know? It's, it's a tough industry, but I know you guys will, will thrive because as long as you experiment and keep progressing in this industry, you'll make it. You'll make it. So, usual sign-offs. Uh, if you have any account billing or technical issues, hit me up at support at webflow.com. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, uh, usually within an hour or even less. Um, if you want to catch us on our social media, it's uh, for this one, youtube.com slash webflow. On Twitter, it's at webflow app. Or follow me, it's at webflow underscore Nelson or at the Pixel Geek. Um, Facebook.com slash webflow. And yeah, these streams happen every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. I hope to see you next week. And as always, love you guys. Keep making the web beautiful. <laughs>